Hey guys, Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today we're taking a look at what I said in my last uh, vid tut. I know I posted up one since then and uh, had nothing to do with this. But uh, what I'm going to be talking about today is when Cheat Engine cannot find a unique array of bytes for you when you use the template on how we can use maybe another method to kind of get around that without having to just really trial and error, trial and error, trial and error and, and just not finding anything. Now this game that we're using does use mono features and we can just use the mono address to write this same cheat with no problems it'll find that address every time as long as mono is on uh, the mono features in cheat engine is on however that's not really the point of this particular lesson because this lesson is intended for any game you may be having this trouble with where cheat engine just says cannot locate a unique array of bytes you know how can we possibly get around this and still use an AOB, which is the best way to go in locating an opcode address? So, now this is a lesson for more intermediate to advanced, and it is a little complicated and very involved in the steps you need to take. And uh, but we're just going to do it step by step by step. So I'm not really getting into how I found this particular value. Basically, it was just trial and error in the mono that cheat engine dissects for us and just until I actually found something that worked but once I found something that worked it was time to write the script and that's where we're starting this particular tutorial is after we've already found the location we want to modify we're into the script writing part of it now and cheat engine cannot find our unique array of bytes and I'll show you a little trick to get around with that but it is very involved so uh, bear with me on this. I'm going to uh, go ahead and bring everything up and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, I'm having to re-record a section because it did not record my mouse pointer. And this is so involved that it needs the mouse pointer so I can point the stuff better. So I'm going to just have to redo it. I'm, uh, it's aggravating. But let me bring back up Regalia down here. And I'll just redo it what we're going to do all right let me get to a location where we can actually start a battle and what we're going to be modifying is the authority points and what authority points does is points that you accumulate each time it's your turn again or the beginning of the new cycle and it gives you an extra point and it allows you to have another turn and it also you have to have so many authority points to be able to use your special attack and, and things like that and uh, so I have a script where we can have 999 authority points basically giving us indefinite turns with one character and uh, it was really hard to find so I'm not really going to go into how I found it you know just for the sake of time on here because uh, the script we're going to be doing finding the unique array and everything we need to do step by step by step uh, or cheat engine to find the actual op code that we're wanting to modify is very involved and we're just gonna have to go slow and go over it step by step okay so let me get to that location well, I'm sorry every time I bring the game up I'm thinking I'm already in battle and I'm at a save point I keep forgetting about that so normally I would have just started it as soon as I got to it yes yeah, back up <clears throat> All right, so we're going to go to this region over here. All righty. So, second time around, let's try this again and see if we can get it to do right. All right. So, what we're going to do, and I'm going to go ahead and get to that location, and I'm going to use the array of bytes I already have for it. But I'm going to show you how we do this right here. And we have to change everything in here, even how it's disabled. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And it'll help you understand the template a lot better and why it puts the knot and the jump and how many knots it has or if it even has a knot, how it sets these things. You're going to learn all that. <clears throat> all right. So enter node, and we're going to go ahead and get to the battle. Go ahead and set our characters, and then we're going to find our location. And I'm going to explain a little bit about it when I get there. Okay, so start battle. And I'm going to pick her. She's my favorite fighter. And I'm going to pick him because he's the main character. Hang on. I forgot to set her. There we go. Now pick Kim. Set her there. And finish deploy. 
All right, so I'm going to get her up here. And what we want to do now, our authority points are right here. You can see that right here. And like I said, it allows us to use our special. If we got it enough accumulated. You can see here that she needs two authority points. And uh, the blitz feature that gives us another turn after our turn is over, it needs one authority point. So, and we only have one. So that's what we're trying to modify. So let's go ahead and use up a turn. Alrighty. And I'm going to hang it right there. And this is where we're going to begin to modify our scripts. So let's go ahead and, uh, or make our script, I mean. Let me go ahead and recopy that. And we're going to hit Array of Bytes. Make sure this is readable and writable. Make sure that's on hex. Now, usually it finds two locations, but the one I need to modify has always been the very top one, so that's okay. All right, and here is the section of memory that modifying our authority points to what we want it to be. This is where it's located. And this is the actual opcode right here. Move EAX into RDX plus 10. Now this is a shared opcode and every single value it seems like in battle is running through that one opcode. So I had to do some comparing out and basically I just got frustrated with that and decided to make a flag to only change the value when we're actually going to use it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But for right now, what we do is we highlight the opcode we want to modify. We go to Tools, Auto Assemble, click on Template, and we want to create an AOB injection. And we name it what we want. And I'm just going to put that for authority points so I know what this script is supposed to do. And this is what we're going to run into. Move that out of the way. Boom. We get this right here. Error. Could not find a unique array of bytes. Tried code this. That's the opcode address or excuse me the opcode itself in byte form and it only searches a specific array either behind it or in front and it searches the entire executable and game memory for that uh, byte structure and it just found too many and could not weed them out so how can we get around this we can't use this script at all oh sorry about that technical difficulties okay but like I was saying here's the opcode right here and you saw we tried to put the script on it or do the AOB script, cannot find a unique array of bytes. So what's another way we could possibly get around this? And what I normally do is I'll go up a little ways above it, but it needs to be in the same structure. Because like I say, an AOB scan is only searching for a unique array of bytes. We need it to be in the same exact structure. So I'm going to go up to this opcode up here. We know that's not it, and that's not the one we need to modify. However, we can adjust it so it triggers this one here, and I'm going to show you. But first, we need to make sure, step one, we need to make sure we can find a unique signature. Okay, and that's what we're doing. So, template, AOB injection. And we'll just rename it to authority points. Just kind of abbreviated. Alrighty, so we can see here, and this is good, we found, Cheat Engine found a unique array. Now is this array going to work every time? Well, we don't know until we bring it up again, but probably not. We're still going to have to make this a little more unique by wild carding and things like that. But that's not in this step. Right now, we just need to make sure the AOB works. So what we're going to do is assign it to the current cheat table, and we need to make sure it's mopping out the one area we put it on. Let me go ahead and name it AOB Authority. There we go. Alright, so we turn it on and it needs to put a jump right here. And take a look. It puts a jump right here and so it is finding that particular location fine. The only problem is, is we need it to modify this opcode. We need this modified. So we need the jump to come here. Or we need to put the jump here to allocate a memory, not here. And that's where this comes in. So let me show you. Okay, we know it works, so it's not 
putting the jump at the correct opcode. So we need to modify things so it's going. Here's a snapshot of the same thing. Here's the opcode we need to modify that's in control of our authority points value. So we need to change this information to make the jump appear down there instead of up here. So how is it putting these jumps here? Well, the first thing you need to know is jumping to an address and allocated memory is going to be five bytes. Always five bytes, okay? So you can see here, and I'm going to show you where this came from. It's uh, one, two, three, four, five bytes, and we have access. So since this particular opcode right here was only four bytes long, it needed to borrow a byte to make five bytes from the next opcode, and then we're left with remainder bytes that we need to knock out. So that's four additional knocks we need. And you can see that's what Cheat Engine does automatically. Jump to new min, which is five bytes in the four axis. Knock, 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 just like that. But we need it to come down here. So first of all, we need to find out where the beginning of that scan actually is. As you can see, it's plus D. The very beginning of your AOB is always going to be whatever your symbol name is. Just the symbol name. Forget about the plus o, uh, zero D right now. Just that symbol name that we registered a symbol for. That's going to be the name of that very first byte, which is at zero. And I'm going to show you. Okay? So you got to count over in hex D, which I believe is what, 14? Let's see, A11. Uh, B12, no, A is 10, B11, C12, D is 13, I'm sorry. So 13 bytes over is the actual, actual beginning of that, I'm sorry, it's right here. 13 bytes in decimal form is the beginning of this right here. And as you can see, one, you start at zero, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 and that's where it's placing the jump. That's why they put the plus D But we want it here at this 89 because that's the beginning of this opcode right here. So we need it here instead So what I do is I count the bytes beginning from where it originates from you can see the 13 5 5 4 8 That's where the cheat engine found 13 5 5 4 8 so we start again, and we count zero, one, two, three, four, and we count all the way down to right here, which I'm going to tell you right now is 50 bytes. You count them all up, and you have to do it correctly. Remember, the very first byte is always zero. That is the name of your symbol. The very next byte starts one, two, three, and all the way down here is 50. You can also do it this way. You can go to address of where the scan starts, Copy it. Go to address down here. We can bring this up just a little bit. And these are the same bytes, and you can count them a lot easier. <coughs> so either way, the same bytes: 1355488B, 1345488B, and so forth. And I believe our opcode begins right here: 894210. 89, excuse me, 4889.45. F O no that's not it, I'm sorry. 8942108B C F. Is that it? 89421. Yep. So we need to count all the way from here all the way to here. So and you can do that however you want to. I do it uh, in base 10 decimal, which is normal numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to here, and you're gonna count 50 bytes. So when you I believe it's 50. I'm going to have to redo that, but I'm going to do that off recording. So I'm going to recount that just to make sure that's 50, okay? So I'll be right back with you. Now, however you want to count it, it's totally fine. If you notice these, you can barely see them. I don't even know if you can see them on this vid, but they're, they are separated by these little yellow lines. And in between those little yellow lines are eight bytes, all eight bytes. So you can do the math that way, or you can just physically count it. I prefer just to physically count it because I don't trust my math skills. <laughs> But all the way to that 89, from here, starting at 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to that 89 right here is 50 bytes. So, and that's in decimal. I only count in decimal, base 10 decimal. 
So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. If I was counting in hex, it would be 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, and going from there. But I don't count that way. So what I do is I come down here, I put in 50, the decimal, and then I get its hex value, which is 32. And we have to put it in its hex value. So we want it to count 32 hex, which is 50 decimal, over to that address. And we want to put it down here as well when we disable it. That's not the only thing we need to change. We also need to change how it restores. And we also need to change how it jumps to our allocated memory because the bytes are different. And this is where our knowledge of assembly comes in handy. Okay? Now we're going to use the snapshot right now, okay? Because it got it where we need it at right here. And you see, we got one, two, only three bytes. The opcode we have it on is one, two, three, four bytes long to restore or to set a jump at. And anytime you jump to an allocated memory address, it's going to be at least five bytes. Five bytes is what we need. So if the opcode itself is not five bytes long, it's going to have to borrow another opcode and borrow the bytes from it too. So we need five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you see we have one access byte left over. So we need to change the jump. The jump is five bytes long and we have one remainder byte. So all we really need to do is we need a jump and one knock. A jump equals five bytes, jump to new mem equals five bytes, and then that one extra knock. That'll set the bytes correctly. Now we need it to restore the correct bytes when we turn it off. If we leave it like this, it's going to restore this and put it down here. And that's just going to screw up everything. So we can't have that. So we need these bytes, 894210. All right, and we need the bytes down here. And it will restore these two, because that's the ones that we're gonna be manipulating. So let's see for right now if that worked, okay? So instead of putting the jump here like it did last time, we want it to put the jump here. And that's what we're looking for. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on. Boom. Take a look. Put the jump here with our extra knot. Does it restore it back to the way it previously was? It does. So we see that works exactly the way we need it to. All from finding a unique array on up the function. It has to be in the same function for this little trick to work. So right now we got a good location that we can modify our script. And that's our next step. So let me save what I got and we'll go ahead and fill in the details. And I'll be right back with you. All right, now we're on, I believe, to step three. We actually make sure that our script, we already made sure that our script put, puts the jump where it needs to. It's jumping to allocated memory. Now we need it to write the correct value to our, and I'm not getting into that and everything because it just took me a while to find these things. And I'm just gonna use what I already have okay but you know you find your value and everything and I, I made enough I made a flag and did all that mess I need to put the uh, the labels and the unregistered symbol correctly so I'm sorry that I'm bypassing the step it's just you know I need to save that time okay all right so we found, uh, we found compares that are working for us okay. We made an authority flag. We need to unregister the symbol for when we turn it off. So we'll just move that down here. But what we're left with is we still have the wrong opcodes as the original code. We need these opcodes because that's where our jump is now. So we just overwrite that. Copy. And I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm going to explain what the code is doing. Okay, I'm going to explain what this script is doing. I had to find there's multiple addresses going through this particular opcode, so I had to separate out what address the 
authority points are being stored in. So I found a unique registry that separated a lot of them out. I also found in dissect data uh, registry and offset where authority flag was also unique. However, there are so many addresses going through it that you know it just doesn't separate every little single thing out so instead of putting 14 different compares I made a flag to only turn on when I need it to change I don't need it to be on all the time I don't need this code constantly writing 999 all the time just one time and then I can use it during that fight and I don't have to turn this code on again until the next fight okay so that's what I did and then I created a flag and then I go turn the flag on down here and I set that to a hotkey and it will what it will do is when that flag is on after it does its separation out from other addresses we turn that flag on if it sees that's the one it will just keep going down the list we automatically have it turn the flag back off by setting it to zero and writing 999 to the carrier registry which writes it to our authority points address and the flag is back off, so the next time it runs back through, it sees that it equals zero, and it will just jump the code and not write 999. That'll keep it from writing that 999 to other values, just to only use it when we want it to. Okay? So that's what it actually does, so that that's fine. And what did I do? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot to put a location for it to store in an address. There we go. We'll just put that down here and I'll go over how to do all this make flags and other videos that I will link up here for you so feel free to go take a look at it and everything I'm doing I've already went over hundreds of times in different goods so all right so here's our script down here and here is the add address manually and what we do is we put in the authority points plus offset which I've already done and this is what it looks like the authority flag which will be zero when we turn it on and there is no offset and I set it to a hot key which is the star on the numerical keypad and I put a little note in here just only once in battle before using blitz so we want to follow the instructions or you know there could be problems so we got it turned on and I've got this set to off and what the way I did that let me take that off just to show you how to do this when you create your own flags, it's either one or zero, you can have it display on and off. And you do that by set change drop down selections and options. And what you do is I set zero colon to represent off, one colon to represent on, and then you tick on these bottom two right here and it will display the words instead of the numbers. If you tick these off, It'll just display the numbers like you see now, zero. Okay, so to do that, let's show you one more time. Zero colon and whatever you want that word to be, and one colon, whatever you want that word to be, and then tick these two on, and it will display on and off instead of zero and one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use our turn, and if our script is successful, when we match the star hotkey and turn the flag on, that should go to 999. Alright, so what we do, let's go over here and we're just going to use a skill. I'll just use a whirlwind. There we go. And you see all our skills are now grayed out. We have to wait another turn to come back around before we can use them again. That's what this blitz is for. If we use a blitz, it'll unhighlight these except for that one that needs two cycles to complete but we can use another skill if we want to but we want that to equal 999 so I'm also going to turn on my unlimited skill usage no cooldown right here hopefully it'll turn on there we go and we're going to mash our hotkey to turn this on let's go ahead and mash it now and you see it's on that means that now we set a one into that address of our flag so now it's not going to meet that condition and write the 999 into there so let's use a blitz point and see if it does and take a look now we got unlimited moves and stuff we can 
just keep going with our turn. We got we can use our special anytime we want to in conjunction with that code. And you can see our flag turned itself back off because we moved zero back into it in our script. So let's see. And take a look. And we can just keep using looks. That unlimited skill usage isn't working, so I'll have to go back and mess with that later. But that's beside the point. But I wanted to show you how to do that. And how we can get around when Cheat Engine isn't able to find a unique array of bytes. So I do hope this helps you. Okay, and our final last step is we need to make this array of bytes more unique because next time it pops up some of these bytes may change we got to make it a little more unique that should be fairly easy uh, just a little bit time consuming and bringing it up about two and three times i just noticed some changing bytes and then we just run it through this up here with the array of bytes scanner and if it still just brings up only two addresses and the one you need modified is on the top you're usually good to go you might want to make it a little more unique to get rid of any access addresses, but if it's on the top, it's only going to modify the first one it comes to. If it's happening every single time you bring up the game, then you could possibly get away with it. Most game hackers wouldn't recommend that, but for the sake of tutorial, I'm just leaving it like that for the time being. We just want to check it and make sure that our location is the top one. And it is. And after I brought it up several times, I've noticed that these are the wild carded bytes and the other bytes are remaining constant. And so I modify my array of bytes and we got a working cheat that'll work every single time we bring it up. And we're going to take out this address and we're just going to name it our symbol. Just like that. And we're done. Wait a minute, what's, what's that? Not all codes and jet will target flag was supposed to be added to the symbol list, but it isn't declared. Well, it is, because it's right here. But, you know, I, I'll work with that in a minute. That's alright. But now we got one that works every single time. Let's bring it back up in memory view. And you can see it's modifying our jump and we follow it and here's our cheat and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do all right so i hope this helps you out when you run into that it's just another method it may not work for every single time you run into this problem but it's a method you could possibly try it's still very involved as you saw it requires you doing a little more work than just creating the template and writing your script and be done with it so you know, it really helps to understand what's going on in the script and how it's placing that jump. You know, why it's counting uh, those offsets and everything like that. When you see this right here, that's what it's doing. It's starting from one particular byte and it's going to the location you want it to modify or place this particular jump. So that's, that's what that's there for. And these sets the bytes back to that place that was changed. So all those errors need to be changed, and now you know why. So I, I hope this helps you out. Thank you guys so much for coming out and supporting Cheat the Game. I really appreciate it when you come here to watch the vid, put likes on it. That really helps us out tremendously. Uh, come also join us over at our Facebook channel. We have a lot of great game hackers that hang out there. Uh, we don't go too much into online games, especially with server-sided values and things of that nature. However, if you have questions about Cheat Engine, Assembly, Lua, we have plenty of great game hackers a lot of them better than i am that i go to when i need help <laughs> but uh, we're happy to answer your questions if we're able to also at our cheat the game dot net website we just got up and running uh, you can come get on on the ground floor there too great place to post your stuff post your questions and share any cheat tables you may have and we also share ours as well so come join us over there and our discord channel also a great place that a lot of uh, my subs hang out at and ask their questions and just hang out period you know and uh, we have some good times in all three places also want to thank twilight killer x for the cool logo 
he made for us and he submitted that to me and I wanted to go ahead and use that for this vid great job my friend I love creativity like that and if you guys have anything like that you would like to submit you can do that at one of the three channels and I'm happy to take a look at it you know and uh, I'm into graphics and stuff like that so really great job and I want to thank him for doing that and I wanted to uh, showcase that off also he is a partner over at the patreon and uh, he helps with all my other partners they help keep ctg running and help me keep the website up and everything and if it wasn't for these guys i honestly couldn't do this anymore and uh so the vid tuts come out you know the more patronage we get the more i can come out with these things because i have more time to do it instead of looking for the next dollar that's coming my way <laughs> but uh any help that you guys can give will be very much appreciated i also want to state i will be posting bids at patreon that's exclusive for patreon partners this will be tuts uh tips tricks suggestions and also regular touch that i will not make available to the regular public that will only be available for partners so keep that in mind too so we only ask for a dollar donation a month uh, to be a partner you'll also have your name up here as well on every vid touch that i come out with and uh, i'm happy to announce that so please come over and uh check us out there as well all right well guys thank you all so much for all you do for shoot the game it, you are Cheat the Game. It could not exist without you. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, it doesn't mind cheating you. You all take care now.